Hey, it's chef and builder J.D. Pendleton, and I'm going to show a side of me that a lot of you didn't know. I just usually don't do a YouTube video on it, but I'm also a professional seamstress, and I have been since I was about 14, 15 years old. And um, I've made a lot of quilts. I'll have to sh uh, do a video on that one day. But right now I'm doing a lop quilt. My mother just moved, and she completely remodeled her new house. And she's done it all in burgundies and reds and uh, taupes and stuff and uh, like a straw, kind of a brown color. And so I picked these up on um, eBay. Find the squares. You can hear my love bird, sorry. Uh, and I combined the five inch squares to make this beautiful lap quilt for my mother. I've made her several quilts and she likes just a simple square quilt. That's her favorite design. So I've just taken here and I've cut the five inch squares out and I've just kind of laid them out randomly and you want to take and you want to spread your reds or your solid collars um, evenly out along with the lighter collars and your medium collars and then you want to mix in some florals or polka dots or you know what have you and when you get this all laid out the way you like it so here I'm going 10 wide and I'm going 13 long and this right here fits for, uh, if you go 9, wa uh, nine uh, wide and 10 long or 11 long or even up to 12, you can have a nice size crib quilt. But this is her, this is for my mother, this is for like a large lap blanket. So again, we're just going 10 by 13 on the squares, okay? And here I'll kind of zoom them in so you can see the design a little better. Again, I'm not going all out on this, it's going to be an easy sew. And that's why I thought this would be a really good, um, I just made my daughter a skirt for World War II reenactment out of the red. So I thought, man, while I got the materials and everything, I'm going to just go ahead and make my mother's quilt. Her birthday is November the 1st, so this is going to be a surprise to her. And she doesn't have internet, so I know she can't see this. So I decided to go ahead and post uh, on how to make just a very simple block quilt. Okay? Easy, easy, easy. Now, besides the 10 by 13, or the size that you, you want, these are 5 inch squares that I've got cut out here. I'll be using about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You also need a backing that fits. Now, I get this, uh, um, I get this muslin, I get this on uh, eBay as well. And so, but it's a nice, shiny, nice, tight stitch. It's something like you'd use for like a really heavy this wouldn't even be used for sheets. I mean, this is a very heavy uh, muslin cotton, very shiny. It's a very good, durable uh, backing for quilt backing. And again, you can find this on eBay. Just look up uh, white quilt muslin, and uh, you'll find that. And then here you'll need some polyfill, and this is just the extra loft batting because my mom likes hers uh, thick, and I do a double layer of it. And it's the rolled batting, not the stuffing stuffing, but it's actual batting, which is the rolled pre-made flat stuff okay you'll need that and you'll need some white or thread matching the color of the quilt that you are using and you will need a large eyed needle and this is for the yarn if you decide you want to tie this you're going to need this now let's walk over here and i'm going to show you the baby quilt i just made for my first granddaughter she's going to be here in just a couple of weeks i'm so excited i'm going to be a grandma Okay, so you come over here, you're also going to need some matching yarn if you decide you want to tie it uh, to give it that nice, that nice finish now, look. Now this is the quilt that I just made my granddaughter Lila. It's the blacks and the whites and the pinks. And, uh, and this quilt right here is actually staying here. I made it to match my decor. Um, and then I'm going to make her one that matches her crib set, which will be in the pinks and the greens and the browns. And the little girl monkey fabric that I ordered. But this is a little bit more um, adult-like in the material. Oh, I just love it all. So I put all my favorite materials together here and made this quilt. And then here, since she's my first green baby, um, I just freehanded this on the machine on the button satin stitch a setting on my old singer. And I wrote out her name, Lila. L-Y-L-A-H. And um, I don't know if you can see it there very well. There you go. I think you can see that a little better. And, uh, and I just wrote her name on it. And here I've got that same, I've got that same backing here. Now when I make my quilts, 
I do cut the batting off to the edge then I roll this over and then the batting will just be right there on the edge and then when I sew this I try to sew it as straight as I can and I set my needle over just a little bit I've got an adjustment where I can adjust my needle over to the uh, left because I'm well I'm actually ambidextrous so I can sew either way but my sewing machine is made for a right-handed person so I usually set the uh, needle over to go over to the left a little bit more but when you come to these corners and you fold these corners over just make sure that if you can see it's real close just make sure that this point meets you know roll it this way give that a tuck and make sure when you fold that over that these points meet and you get a nice straight corner to corner you get a nice 45 degree angle and you don't you can sew down this if you want to but I just sew this way into here part way back stitch come forward lift up the presser foot give this thing a turn okay and then I sew down this direction and then I back back up this way and then back down again and now on the back side you might be able to see that a little better what I've done and if you like I mean you might have a more updated machine than me you might be able to write somebody's name on there um, I just kind of had to freehand it so it's not perfect but I've done it several times so I'm getting pretty good at it now what we'll do with this is we'll just take this white yarn here that I've got. You can get it in any color you like. We'll um, get a long string of this. We'll just keep it attached. I won't even cut this off. Let me see my end here. I'll just thread the needle on here like this. Get a little bit of a tail going like this and I won't even unattach that. And I'll just take these corners and I'll just dive that needle here in every corner without cutting and I'll just keep going. And then I'll come over here and I'll do this corners as well and then I'll come back through and I'll cut them all and then I'll tie them and then I'll trim them down to the height that I want to have them. Now that's how I bind my quilts the easy way. That's the easy way of doing it. Um, if you want to machine quilt this or you want to hand quilt this then by all means go right ahead. But this is just what I would call a four hour project, four and a half hour project and, uh, and that's all the time that I want to put into it. Um, as you know, I'm a very busy person with construction and um, in my YouTube channel with my cooking channel, so very busy, but uh, I wanted to, um, plus I have time, I want to spend time with my birds. Where are my birds? Where'd you go? Oh, you're right here next to me. <laughs> I didn't even see him. Hi, Hector. Oh, there's Hector. There's Andromaki up here on the light. Hello. Hi, baby. Hi baby, you watching me make quilts? You watching me make quilts? Hi baby, you wanna come see me? Oh, here, she's gonna go. Okay, okay this is Andromaki and Hector. Hi there baby. Hi there, you wanna come see me? You wanna come see me? Come on. They're afraid I'll take them back to the room, so. Watching me, especially these bright collars, they really like that, so. Anyway, what we're gonna do now is, you know, I showed you the basics. So just learn to use your machine. If you uh, want to hand do this, you can, but boy, this is a lot easier on a machine. And what we're going to do here is we're going to start here on the narrow end, okay? And we're going to pick our first row. So we keep these in the order that we laid them out. We're going to pick the first row. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure this one stays on top. And we're going to go like this, okay? And we're just going to stack them like this. And we're going to stack this row all the way to the end and we're going to sew them all together end on end and we have them all laid out sewn together then we're going to start uh sewing the strips together we'll sew that one together then we'll sew that the, uh, this one to those two then this one to those three then this one to those four this one to those five and so on okay you get it it's actually really really basic Okay, when I said I had an old uh, Singer machine, I meant it. This thing just has the basic zigzag and the basic smock style stitches, which I rarely use any of these. Uh, sometimes I'll do that tack stitch, but, uh, but I can use my needle. You know, I can move it back and forth here. I can change the depth of that. And this right here is my reverse button. This is my stitch length. And this right here is my buttonhole maker. And that is it. On off switch. I just keep it oiled. I've got the old fashioned uh, bobbin here. There you go. There you go. And if I'm doing sleeves or something, I can take this off. And this used to sit down inside of a cabinet, but I got rid of the cabinet a long time ago. So, 
But that's it. I mean, it's very, very basic. Look, it just didn't even put itself back. Yeah, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started. Read your machine and get your machine ready and your tension set and the presser, the presser foot tension set according to your machine. Okay, practice on some scrap material. Um, just have some fun with it for a little while before you get started. Okay, because you don't want to mess this up. You want the corners to to meet up uh, now fairly well. Now what you well. can do, so you can remember what corner you started in, because this will be important throughout the whole quilt, is you can mark the very start with a pin, just like that right there. Just mark it with a pin. And then you'll always know what corner that you started on. And this will help keep you, you know, this will help keep you focused on where your squares are sitting, especially if you have a pattern or design that's very specific. And I laid mine out and I like the way I laid it out, so that's the way I want to do it. Okay? So now we're just going to take these right sides together, take the first two. Matter of fact, I'm going to move this pin down just a little bit here. There we go. Get it out of the way so it doesn't catch on the presser foot. All right, now we're going to take the first two. Just like that and with right sides together and with them very squared up I'm just going to square it up like that right sides together now we're going to set this at a quarter of an inch you'll see some numbers here on the right side of the presser foot and you'll see where it says three four five and six okay well, that's your measurement. Now, on number four, that's going to give us, well, actually, number three is a quarter of an inch. So, we're going to go about five-eighths of an inch will be number four. We want a quarter of an inch. So, we're going to stick here with that number three, that very first line, that very first marking, okay? Now, go easy on the presser foot and just follow your distance here on your lines right here. Remember, I showed you that little line right there? Just follow it closely. And then there we go. The pressure foot was stuck. Okay. Pick a couple, go back, and that's locking the stitch. And you want to set this on a pretty tight stitch. Making sure, I mean, you can pin this if you want to if you're new at it, but I can pretty much hold it together. If your machine has a tendency to pull, then by all means, you know, give it another lock stitch. Come forward again. Now, what you can do with this, and if you um, if you really know what you're doing, you can just take and pick up the next two. But the problem with that is, is I have them all marked in order the way that I want them. Because normally, I could just put two right sides together, and I wouldn't even have to cut my string. I would just push the next set through just like this. I would just go like this, and I would just keep on running it crossed. And I would just keep them attached and then later on open them up, uh, you know, cut them apart and open them up. But the problem with this is, is I do have a pattern that I'm following. So with that being the case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lift my presser foot here. This uses up more thread, I know, but there are shortcuts, but there's times when you can't use a shortcut. So now, what do we have here? Okay, now if I open this up and my pin's here, I know that this is the upper corner. Okay, I know that this is the upper left corner of my quilt. And I know that this is on top, so it's my next piece. So all I'm going to do is flip this down, make sure I have right sides together. And I do. I'm going to pick this up. We're just going to continue to run this through the machine, making sure that we stay on that line. We want our corners to meet up. And if you've cut these squares pretty daggone well, and you've stayed really square here. All right, so now we're just going to continue to sew these and continue to keep our quarter inch seam allowance. That sounds so much better now. Thread pulls nicely now. And we're just going to trim off all these. Um, just going to trim off the edges here. And you can see here, keeping this, the pin in the upper left, 
we're going to keep going and we're going to come through here and we're going to do all the rows the same fashion and then we're going to come through and we'll start sewing them together in lengths and we'll be right back and show you how to do that okay and this is our last strip oh, I messed up on the very last one that's the way it always works isn't it If you get a little tug like that, just give it a pull. Just give it a pull, just like that. All right, so now let's take these over. And let's put these together. So here we have all of our strips sewn this direction. Now we got to start sewing on them onto each other this way. See, they're not sewn on that direction. We just made some long strips here. Looks like all my squares are going to meet up nicely. So what we're going to do now, where we've got the pin, and we're going to start there. We're going to fold this right sides together, just like this. And we're going to sew that edge together. And I'm going to pinch that side of the edge, right like that right there. Goes through my machine that way. Okay, and this is a corner we're going to start with. So let's head back over to the sewing machine. Now when I start, on this side, I mark it with a pin so I remember what side I'm on. You just want to start by that first seam right here. See that first seam? We're going to put it together just like that right there. One seam this way, one seam laying down this way. Then we're going to take, and we're just going to give that a pin just like that right there. And I like the way that's landing. We're going to pin the start here, okay, and we're going to pin this, doing this all the way down, making sure that our seams line up. Now, if I have a seam that's a little short here, then it depends which way we turn that. That's going to fit perfect. Just going to give that a little pin there. That's fine. We'll go to the next seam and do the same thing. We're going to do this all the way down. We're going to pin these all the way down. Okay, when I get this all pinned, I'll be right back. Okay, now we've got the long strip right sides together, all pinned. All of our seam allowances are pinned. We got our top seam allowances facing us. The bottom seam allowance is facing away from us. And we've got all of our seams are matched perfectly, well, as perfect as you can get. And remember, this is a simple project. Uh, you're going to tie the corners with the yarn. So if you don't have perfection, that's fine. No one's going to see it. Go ahead and pin this upper one, set your presser foot in it, take a few stitches, back your stitches back up, then take the pin out. Try never to run over a pin, um, that can break your needle. We're just going to keep our quarter inch seam allowance, and we're going to pull that pin out, and we're just going to keep going just like that. But it's nice to have a, uh, a magnetized uh, pin cushion. You just take them out and throw them on the pin cushion. All right. Now, when you get so far, you want to come back here and you just want to check your stitches. Make sure your tension's fine. I need to make my stitches a little tighter. See, they were a little loose here. And I like a tight stitch. All right, so that's fine. We're just adjusting our stitch. Adjust your pressure, uh, your pressure foot, a pressure. Uh, that's important. So you just got to get to know your machine. You know, see what works for you. Two more stitches here. Take that out. Okay, now we're just going to keep going with this. Just trying to maintain our quarter inch. Um, Seam allowance here. Seam allowance is your quarter inch between here and here. And we'll be right back. I'm going to sew all of these together and when we get done we'll have a quilt top. And we'll be ready to put this quilt together. Okay? So we'll be right back. Okay, now we just finished sewing the first two together. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to flip this over 
and we're going to mark this side that we are going to sew together by pinching it with our hand. Remember, you want to keep this pin in this one because we want to have a direction of where we're always starting in that upper uh, left corner there. So what we want to do here is grab this like this and we're going to take this over the machine. Now again, with our quarter inch seam allowances, so we got the seams right. All right, once you get your top piece together and it's all ready to go and you're happy with it, there it goes, um, you want to lay out your muslin. This is just a, what they call a quilt backing or a cotton muslin. And this, you can see, I don't know if you can see this up close or not. But it's a really shiny, heavy-duty quilt backing. And that's what you want. This will last longer over time. Okay? And that's important since that's the side that usually gets uh, rubbed on your clothes and gets used. So, you know, because that's the side that, you know, goes on your lap. So, that's important. You get a nice, a nice backing on this. Now, if you're going to do a baby blanket, then this softer muslin works better for a baby blanket. See how soft that is. It's just, I wish you could feel the difference. See, you hear it? You can't even hear it, but this one, much heavier duty. It doesn't even wrinkle up the same way that this does. See that? Okay. So you can see that that's a heavier duty fabric, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we've laid this out. Now once you've laid this out, we're going to take our rolled batting, we're going to unroll it, we're going to lay it across this layer. Make sure that, uh, this really doesn't have a wrong side and a right side to this, so it really doesn't matter. I just kind of open it and lay it down. I look for kind of the shiniest side and put that face down, and that's fine. Um, on the rolled batting, if you want a thinner lap quilt, then go with just one or two layers of batting and if you want it thicker then by all means go three or four I mean you can go as thick as you want on this I usually go two and that's that makes for a nice quilt now we're just going to open up our rolled batting and we're going to lay it across our muslin you can see once you open this up you know it's it's pretty thin let me show this to you see once you open it up it's pretty thin so I keep it doubled. And doubled fits an open 45 inch wide thing of fabric perfectly. You have to, you can stretch it a little, that's fine. Let me get it down here where it needs to be. There you go. all the wrinkles out of it. You have to give it a stretch. And just keep going down and keep stretching it just like this. Making sure that it's two layered all the way across. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim this off and then pull that down. Get one more pull down here. that it's centered, so that you got no humps or bumps in it, make sure it's pulled tight all the way to the edges. That is now. There we go. I'm going to straighten this edge out here with a pair of scissors. straighten that bend out. There we go. There we go. That looks good. There. Look like at that corner there. Maybe a little more off this corner here. There we go. 
go. Looks good. Now, let's place on our top. Go like that and like that. Looks perfect. Just keep floating the air up underneath there like this as you pull forward. Now, you want to bring the quilt and the batting evenly to this edge. Into that edge there as well. Okay, so here we have our, so here we have our backing, we have two layers of batting, and we have our top. Now I would have liked to seen the backing come all the way here to the edge, but, <laughs> but in this case it didn't, and that's fine, as long as we catch it when we roll our edges. So now what we're going to do We have our backing, here. we have our two layers of batting. And we have our quilt top right side up. We're going to start in a corner now and we're going to roll this. We're going to roll this about five eighths up to a half of an inch. Give it a flip and pull this up and over almost a full inch, about three quarters of an inch to an inch. That's fine. Making sure that this top quilt piece here is nice and taut. So we've got this nice and straight here. And then we're going to pin this way because we're going to run the sewing machine you know, down it this way. So we don't need the pin heads this way. We need them to sit this way. It's very important, okay? So then we're going to come this way. We're just going to get the same seam allowance here all the way down. Making sure to pull it up the quilt the same distance. And you can take a tape measure and you can measure this to make sure your distance is the same. But I've been, like I said, I've been doing this a long time so I don't need the tape measure but if you're new at this, take the tape measure. Ouch! Make sure you got it. There we go. I just pinned it myself. Now in between here, I'm going to put lots of pins. Making sure I get that quilt top there nice and tucked. Matter of fact, I think this is over just a little bit too much. And I probably don't have that one up there enough. Again, we're just going to give that another pin. Pinning it about every two or three inches apart. making sure that we catch that batting in there as we go. Okay, and we're going to work our way down the quilt all the way around. Now let me show you what you do when you come to the corner. Okay, so now we have this pinned down this side and we have it pinned down this side, but we have this corner that we have to deal with. So now let me show you what my little trick here. So I get to where you can see it. I hold this open and flat right here with my finger. I give it the roll. Use my other finger to pull that tight. Use this finger to pinch it down. Then I release these fingers. And fold it like this. And I give it its final fold right here. Okay. Little bit. Get a pin here. Lock it right there. And then right here in this corner, I give it a tuck. See that little corner right there? Let's put this picture where you can see a little better. See that little corner right there? Let's give it a tuck. And then come down like that. And then I take a longer pin right here. And I just come right in here on the edge. Matter of fact, I don't even like that tuck. I'm going to pull a little bit more. There you go. I want these points to meet and that point right there to meet. 
And I just take my pen like this, and just go through like that. And you can see right there that I have a nice corner. Now be careful, because I just poked myself. You don't want to get blood on the <laughs> on your quilt. That wouldn't be good, okay? Now we're just going to go on down, and we're going to finish binding the quilt. And that's what this is called. This is called binding the quilt. Now once you have your quilt pinned and bound, we're going to take it on over the machine, and we're going to give it the final stitch. It'll take about 10-15 minutes, and we're going to be done, other than tacking it down with the yarn. You can also hand quilt this if you like, or you can quilt this on a machine. That's entirely up to you. Okay, we're ready to bind this. Guess it helps to turn on my machine. And what we're going to do is we're going to bind this about a Oh, about an, I set this at a, about a little less than a quarter of an inch, about three sixteenths of an inch right there. And then we're going to move the needle over to the left just a little bit. See, watch my needle move. See that? There we go. That's center. So we just want to move it just a little bit. That will give us about an eighth of an inch. But I just want to be sure and I want to catch that uh, batting that's underneath there this chair around here to hold the weight ouch, of this thing here. There we go. Make sure the quilt's not caught up underneath of you. You can kind of roll it if you have to. Make sure you're in a comfortable position. Okay, there we go. And forward. This is the only time that I sew over needles and I don't normally like to do it. And you really shouldn't do it, but whenever I'm quilt binding I do sometimes, especially on these smaller quilts. Make sure it's all tucked in nicely. Now, remember, just like any other time, you want to take and fold this back and check your stitching. Make sure you like the way it looks. Make sure you don't have to make any adjustments on your pressure, on your um, thread pressure, or on your pressure presser foot. It looks good. Make sure those pins are out far enough. This is why it's nice to have a cabinet, to have your machine inside a cabinet, so you're... Make sure I'm catching everything that I should be, and it feels like I am. That one's in the way. We're just going to keep going with binding the quilt, and we will be right back. And that is how you make a baby quilt, or a lap quilt in this case. You can hand stitch this, you can hand quilt this, you can machine stitch this. There's there are numerous things that you can do with a simple quilt top like this. You could get a pattern to this if you'd like. You know, just play around with it. And um, you can make this quilt bigger to fit a twin bed or, or larger. So just play with it. Start with something small like this project and, you're, and work your way up. This is a fun project. It took me about four and a half hours to complete this quilt. By the time I tack it down with the yarn, it'll be about four and a half to five hours uh, to have a, a nice size, even a crib size quilt. So like I said, this one's for my mother, a lap blanket for my mother. So... But this is chef and builder and seamstress, Janie Pendleton, 
And I hope you've enjoyed coming along for the ride with me today. And I've really enjoyed having you here with me. And I just want to say thanks to all my fans out there who, um, and all my subscribers. Um, I really enjoy hearing from you. So be sure and leave a message below and let me know what you think. Blessings.